Space program of the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO has contributed to the field of medicine, education, satellite surveillance, weather forecasting, and telecommunication. But ISRO has created a history in the field of space research on the morning of 15th Feb of the 2017 by launching more than 100 satellites successfully with the help of single PSLV, that is Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. ISRO has literally shocked the world with the completion of this audacious mission. Today's video is all about the history of ISRO. So before further ado, let's get started. Despite being a newly liberated and developing country, in 1962, India took a bold decision to create its own space agency with a goal in mind to harness space technology for the national development while pursuing space science research and planetary exploration. It is to be said that the idea of India's own space research organization was the vision of the India's one of the greatest visionary and physicists, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai and his utmost efforts to convince the Indian government to relevance of space program makes it one of the earliest space research organizations in the world for the developing country. At the earlier time, ISRO was known as the INCOSBAR, that is Indian National Committee for Space Research, which was set up by the first Prime Minister of the Indian government, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, with the aid of Sarabhai. At that time, the Director of Department of Atomic Energy was Dr. Homi Jahangir Baba. He supported Dr. Vikram Sarabhai in setting up the Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station which is India's first rocket launching station at Thomba near Thiruvanthapuram. They chose the location primarily because of its proximity to the equator of the Earth, making it the ideal location for the scientists to conduct the atmospheric research. Later, the rocket launching station was renamed into the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in honor of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Inkospar eventually grew up into ISRO in 1969 and thus widely institutionalized the space activities in India. ISRO built India's first satellite Aryabhat, which was named after the India's wonder mathematician of the same name. This satellite was launched on the soil of Soviet Union on 19th April 1975. After five years, ISRO was capable to launch its own satellites from its own launching pad. So in 1980, Rohini had become the India's first satellite to be placed in the orbit by an Indian-made launch vehicle SLV-3. Afterwards, ISRO developed two other rockets. Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle for launching satellites into the polar orbits and Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicles for placing satellites into geostationary orbits. In the early 1990s, ISRO designed and developed the PSLV at the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center located in Kerala and their first PSLV launch was on the 20th September of 1993. Unfortunately, the first launch was a failure due to altitude control problem. But after this initial setback, ISRO made Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle successfully completed its second mission on 15th October 1994. In the summer of 1999, ISRO conducted a major mission. First time in their history, they launched foreign satellites and it was their first try to carry the multiple satellites via single PSLV. It was their major success. But ISRO was still dependent on the United States and Europe space agencies for the launch of inset class satellites. In order to acquiring the launching capabilities of the geosynchronous satellite, ISRO initiated the GSLV project. And they bought the technology from the Russian Space Agency to build the geosynchronous launch vehicle. On 18th April of 2001, ISRO launched the first development flight of the GSLV. But it was an initial setback again. The flight carrying satellite GSAT-1 failed to reach the orbit. But in 2003, ISRO made GSLV successfully place the satellite GSAT-2 into the geostationary orbit. And furthermore, in 2004, ISRO launched India's first dedicated satellite, AJUSAT, for the educational services with the help of geosynchronous launch vehicle. On 15th August of 2003, the Indian Prime Minister of that time, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, announced the lunar project on course in his independence speech. The mission was a major boost to the India space program as ISRO researched and developed its own technology in order to explore the moon. It was ISRO's first mission beyond the Earth's orbit. On October 2008, India's first lunar project Chandrayaan-1 was launched from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Shriharikota. It was intended to survey the lunar surface 
to produce a complete map of the moon's chemical characteristics and three-dimensional topography. The lunar mission carried five ISRO payloads and six extra payloads from the other space agencies like NASA, ESA, and Bulgarian Aerospace Agency for absolutely free of cost. On 14 November 2008, Chandrayaan-1 successfully entered a lunar orbit and on 22 November, the moon impact probe developed by the Indian Space Research Organization was released from the Chandrayaan-1 and discovered the presence of the water on the moon for the very first time and created history. During the period of 2011 and 2013, ISRO deployed its own satellite navigation systems like Gagan that is GPS-aided GEO Augmented Navigation and NAVIC that is Navigation with Indian Constellation to provide the accurate real-time positioning and timing services over India and the region extended to 1500 km around India. The navigation system is expected to be operational from the first quarter of the 2018 after a system check. The standard positioning system will be open for the civilian use and restricted or encrypted services will be open for the authorized users only, including military. On 5th November 2013, ISRO launched Mangalyaan successfully and completed the India's first interplanetary mission. On 24 September 2014, Mangalyaan successfully entered the Mars orbit and ISRO has created a history by reaching the Mars orbit in its very first attempt. After the Soviet space program, NASA and ESA, ISRO has become the fourth space agency in the world and the first space agency of Asia to reach the Mars. The main objective of the mission was to develop the required technologies for designing and planning the future interplanetary missions and the secondary goal was to explore the morphology, mineralogy and Martian atmosphere using indigenous scientific instruments. On 23rd June 2016, ISRO placed 20 satellites in the orbit with a single flight, one being a satellite from the Google. This was the record for the most number of satellites to put into orbit by ISRO mission. On 8 September 2016, InSat-3DR, an advanced weather satellite as well as the second heaviest satellite weighing 2,211 kg was successfully placed in geostationary transfer orbit by ISRO. And on 15 February of 2017, Indian Space Research Organization creates a history again and becomes the first space center in the world to send 104 satellites in a single rocket from Satish Dhawan Space Center and created a world record in which 101 satellites were from the international customers of the ISRO. The previous record was of 37 satellites in a single rocket by the Russian Space Agency in 2014 and it is almost thrice the number of the previous record. There is no surprise in that the ISRO has showcased its potential by catering the need of space programs for various developing and even developed countries. So far, ISRO had made the 37th consecutive success with its polar satellite launch vehicle, which is itself a record. And despite of all the accomplishments, the Indian Space Research Organization is said to be the most economical and reliable space center in the world for the launching of the satellites. And this is the result that lots of space agencies from all around the globe today seek for the partnership with the Indian Space Research Organization for future space endeavors. To continue its space activities, ISRO is all set with the various future projects. Currently, ISRO is working on the numerous projects like Reusable Launch Vehicle, Technology Demonstrator or RLV-TD in short. The idea is after placing the satellites into the orbit, the RLV will fly back to Earth and land like a normal aeroplane after the mission. Another future launch vehicle on which ISRO is working on is Unified Launch Vehicle or ULV. The core objective of the project is to design a modular architecture that will replace the PSLV and GSLV with a single family of launcher. The 28th December of 2017 is the expected date for the another historic launch, in which PSLV would be carrying three rovers to the moon while never have a rocket carried even two. This launch is contracted by Team Indus to win Google Lunar X Prize. Moreover, ISRO has already announced that 2018 is the expected year to launch the Chandrayaan-2 and Mangalyaan-2 for future explorations. Also, they are working on the new project called Aditya-1 to carry out a mission to the sun by the year 2020. 
various rumors are suggesting that ISRO is also planning to work on the mission to send the spacecraft on the Venus first and then on the Jupiter with a gap of a year or two. But yet ISRO has not announced officially anything related to such explorations. Anyways, what do you think about the incredible feat of the Indian Space Research Organization? Let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe the channel and give a thumbs up to the video if you have found the video interesting and informative. I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, peace out.